All right, so in this discussion, I'm just going to review a literature review summary table. There are many reasons why this table would be very useful and it can save you so many time once you do your literature review in a very systematic manner, which is what I'm going to show you in this table. So this is a table that explains how we can summarize all of the potential resources or references that we will be capturing throughout our research journey. So I have populated this table with one example and the example is just taken from a random journal article. It's on narcissistic leadership. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you that how can you essentially summarize the information in a very, very brief format, yet very structured way. And keeping your literature review and summarizing it in this format will really help you to deconstruct the concept more clearly and also organize things. And in fact, this is the best way to also capture the previous knowledge and then comment on the key research gap. So as you can see in this table, first we have listed the name of the author and then year, the title, the summary of the findings, methodology, sample, implication, slash contributions, research limitation, and finally links to article. Now I'm just going to briefly explain you the rationale of leaving so many different fields in this table. So starting with the author, obviously keeping the author's name will give you an idea about who has written this article and this will also be beneficial towards the end when you want to embed this uh, reference into your reference list. So that's very important. Then the year field will definitely give you an idea about how all this reference is, whether it's a book or a journal article or a thesis or a conference proceeding, whatever that is, but it's really important to have the year. And as I mentioned in my other videos that it is always advisable to capture more recent knowledge rather than something that's 10 years old. So try to limit your search within the last five years. So that will give you the very recent knowledge that has been, uh, you know, proposed by scholars within this field. So you mentioned the year. The title is also something important because the title will then give you the idea about what exactly the title. So it's really important. Then summary of the findings. So in the summary of the findings section, now. To understand the summary, there's two different ways that you can do that. The first is obviously you can read the abstract and the abstract there is a finding section. Typically in most of the journal articles you'll find on the abstract there is uh, a finding section towards the end of the abstract. So you can pull up the findings from there. Typically this is what I do when I browse any journal article but uh, it's also advisable that you can simply go to the end of the journal article towards the conclusion section or the discussion section so you can also gather the insight on what is the core findings or what is the summary of the findings so you can simply write it in your own words or you can just copy and paste from from there as well now as i say this is not something that you're going to embed into your thesis. If you want to really embed this into your thesis, you can certainly do that as well. So in that case, you must have to paraphrase whatever you have here, other than the title or the other parameters like author and year. The methodology section is very, very important because looking into the methodology of that particular paper or thesis for book, you don't have to write a methodology. But if it's a thesis or if it's a journal article, then definitely you need to have an understanding of what the methodology is. So the article that I looked up, it was a quantitative methodology and they've done a covariance based on structural equation modeling. And the sample will give you the idea about uh, who exactly was involved into the study. So in this study, as you can see, 468 employees from Italian hotels. 
So this study was done on the frontline workers from the hotel industry. Then comes the implication and contribution section. This section is really, really very important because looking into this implication and key contribution of the study, you will get a very good understanding is that what this study has proposed. So what this study is proposing as, as new knowledge or whether it's an extension of the existing knowledge. So this section is very, very important. In fact, this section will also underpin the gaps that are underlying in this current research or in this current uh, topic that you are researching. So just try to make it as comprehensive as you can. As I said, I've just used this one simply for demonstration purposes but you need to summarize it well and truly in a format that you can understand and then also uh, understand what the gap is in this particular reference. Uh, research limitation is also another important field. In this field, you will summarize what are the core research limitation of this study and that will definitely give you insight regarding the gap as well and your study can potentially a, a address to eliminate those limitations. So that's a great way to understand that what limitations are already there in the existing literature and your study will be an extension th to that knowledge. Then you finally um, update the links to the article or the reference. I find this very useful because this definitely gives me uh, an opportunity to see this article or reference uh, any time later if I want. Now, if you are doing this from a reputed database, you may not always have access or embedding the link may not work. But if you are, if you really like some references, if you really think that yes, this reference or this information is really very useful, try to download that. What I used to do, I used to upload, download that particular reference or article at the beginning if I would have had full access. If I don't have full access, maybe I wouldn't be able to do that. I'll just simply just drop a link here. But if I had full access, I would download that thing. And then I used to upload that into a shared drive, like a virtual drive. I used to do that in a Google Drive. And then I'll just simply link the Google Drive here. So that's one way to do it. You can all, uh, also add other field in this table and make it more rigorous like you can add your comments or any other important aspects that that you think would be important for you to to keep in mind but simply this table would really help you to summarize the literature in a very structured format so I hope this demonstration helps you to understand how to summarize your literature uh, rather than broadly reviewing all the literature. If you summarize all of your literature in this structured format, this will really help you to save a lot of time from your life. So I'll make sure to upload this template into the course files so you'll have access to this table.